Hi everyone, it's Ardeth. Happy Canada Day! Today I'm joining a group of crafty Canadian creators in a video hop to celebrate Canadian craft products and shops. I bet you know some of these brands, but maybe not others, and we're really excited to introduce them to you. We have over a dozen videos for you to watch, and there's over a thousand dollars in prizes from our generous Canadian sponsors, so stick around to the end to find out how you can have a chance to win. Have you ever thought about what your card making personality is? I've been thinking about this topic since my two cards for this hop really couldn't be more different from each other. One is clean, simple, and graphic, and the other is romantic, elegant, and feminine. Let's get to it! For my first card, I started with a new-to-me Canadian company called Penguin Palace Stamps. It's a fairly new company from the West Coast with a small but growing catalogue of products and a new release coming in July. They ship internationally, so be sure to check them out, even if you don't live in Canada. I used the Penguin Agenda stamp set, which is full of sweet little penguins, along with little emoji faces, all perfectly sized to use in your planner. Or on a card, of course. I decided to make a card that looks like a planner, and I figured the slimline format would work perfectly for that. I started by creating a card base from a panel of white cardstock cut to 7 inches by 8.5 inches. I scored it along the shorter edge at 3.5 inches, and because my scoreboard is shorter than the card, I just flipped the card and scored it from the other side. Then I folded it in half and burnished the fold with my bone folder. As I said, I wanted my card to look a little bit like a planner, so I trimmed some white cardstock down into five panels that will fit across the card, like Monday to Friday. I took panel two and four out to add some color to them and add interest to the front of my card, and of course I chose red, Catherine Pooler Rouge to be exact, and I went direct to paper with the ink pad to get a vibrant look. Once the panels were dry, I pulled out the Heart Rain stencil and I blended more rouge ink through it onto my little red panels to add some tone on tone interest and texture. I tried to be sure that I lined the hearts up in the same place on both panels so they'll be symmetrical. I like to use a blending brush when I'm using stencils. I find that bristles work equally well as foam for getting into all the little nooks and crannies, but where sometimes you might damage the foam if it gets caught on the stencil edges, I don't seem to have that problem with the brushes. I set the red stripes aside to dry, and then I used my Mini Misty to stamp the little circle stamp in the top right corner of the three white panels in the place that the date would be if this is really going to be a planner. Despite all my earlier measuring, I noticed right away that one of my stripes was not the correct width, so I ended up trimming that down so it would match the rest. Next, I stamped the three little penguins I wanted to have on my card. Two of them are party themed, one with a hat and one with balloons, and one is more of an all-purpose kind of guy, but I stamped the little sign for him so he can join the party too. There's a little like sentiment that fits right into that sign, and I stamped that in the same rouge ink to tie in with the rest of the card. In the interest of time, I'll speed through my Copic coloring of these guys. I kept it pretty simple. Grays for the bodies, orange for the beaks and feet, and red for the balloons and the hat. Next, I started to assemble the card. I attached the three white panels with foam tape, using the grid on my work surface to measure where they should all go. You can see that I added the little emoji faces to the circles in the top corners, and I then added the red strips in their places. I love the feeling of the Canadian flag that these simple shapes created. And I don't know if you noticed, but Canada Day is Wednesday this year, so I put my penguins on the Wednesday spot of the agenda-inspired card front, because that's when the party is this week. I put the balloons right where the maple leaf goes in the flag, and then I added more little faces to the tops of the red stripes to carry through that agenda feeling. So now I have a slimline card that isn't quite an agenda, and it isn't quite a Canadian flag, but you sure can see how those two things influenced my design. And I would say that this card pretty much perfectly reflects my card making personality. It's clean and has graphic elements, along with some whimsy and overall a happy feeling. Now let's move on to my other card, which has a completely different feel. It starts with this pretty floral image from Studio Katia, which is a brand that's been around since 2016. Their products are carried in a number of shops outside of Canada, and they ship internationally as well. I decided to try something different with this stamp rather than just stamping it and coloring it. And if you follow me, you already know that doing this kind of thing is a big part of my card making personality. 
I love to get more from my products by using them differently, and what I did here was to stamp it off the edge of my watercolor cardstock with waterproof ink. The envelope portion of the stamp will not be visible anywhere on my panel, and I love that it's so easy to get another look with this stamp. The rough texture of the cardstock meant that I had to stamp it at quite a number of times to get a really good impression, and then I flipped my panel to stamp it in the opposite corner. When I had those two corners stamped, I created just a little mini mask for the part where the images might overlap, and I stamped the image again from the other side. And again, I turned my cardstock so that I could stamp it again in the final corner. And now, instead of a beautiful floral bouquet popping out of an envelope, I have two lovely strips of flowers at the top and bottom of my panel. Maybe a bit like a Canadian flag, and you know exactly what color I'm going to paint these flowers, don't you? Again, I'm not going to dwell on the coloring, but I used my Zig Art & Graphic Twin Tip Markers in reds, pinks, yellows, and purples to color my flowers. I love these markers, and I find them really easy to work with. Some watercolor markers seem to have really long, brush-like nibs, and I always feel like I struggle to control them. These nibs are firm and shorter, and I have no trouble getting the color exactly where I want it. My method for most of the flowers was to put a line along one edge of a petal, and then draw the color out with clean, clear water. I did try to make sure that I was never working next to an area that was still wet, because then everything would bleed together. So I moved all around the floral border, finding my next dry area to add color to. For these kind of tall flowers, I just put dots of bright pink over them, added some water, and let them dry. I came back in later with a yellow marker in dots and a little more water that added texture and left me with little areas of pink, some of yellow, and some where they blended. And then when I was done with the one edge, I flipped it around and started over. Now I would say that these intricate floral images are maybe not my mainstream card making personality, but there's nothing to say that you can't branch out once in a while and try something new. I really enjoyed coloring these flowers and I love the elegant look I'm getting. The coordinating dies for this set include a scripty hello, and I decided that could be the red element in the middle of my card to continue with my Canadian flag theme. I took a little strip of watercolor cardstock and I scribbled the colors I'd use in the flowers onto it. Then I blended water over top so that the colors would soften into the textured cardstock and mix together. Once everything was blended, I held it up to my panel and I felt like it really wasn't matching that well. It was a lot more yellowy and orange, so I added some pink to the top and I felt like that was a better match. I cut the hello word from this panel and I stacked it on top of three more die cuts for some dimension. And now we have to jump ahead to where the gold dots are already on the center of my panel because I forgot to turn on my camera. I've been doing that a lot lately and it's really annoying me, so that's clearly something I need to work on. So I decided I would do it again so you could see what I did. This time I did it on a whole piece of black cardstock that I was planning to use as a mat. You can see how the mini polka dots cover plate cuts and I have a black cardstock behind the white stencil. These two cardstock panels are the exact same size, and that caused me a little problem, as you'll see in a minute. I used a spatula to put the glimmer paste through the holes. This is the same thing I did with the floral panel, but I had masked the flowers so that none of the glimmer paste got onto the flowers. This time it was all going well, but I ended up with a bit of a mess of the area at the top. This is not the fault of the stencil, but just my lack of precision and care. The panel dried beautifully, and I ended up just cutting off the messy edges and making a smaller card, which doesn't look like a Canadian flag, so it's not really part of this video, but it does represent yet another kind of card-making personality, doesn't it? So to get back to my floral card, I ended up cutting the cover plate from black cardstock and inlaying gold mirror cardstock dots in the holes just around the edges to give almost an industrial or biker look to this card. I love the mix of styles right in this one card. Combining contrasting styles like this often gives you a really neat result. And now for the prize information. We've rounded up a total of 13 shops and two Canadian papercraft magazines who've generously sponsored today's event, and there's over $1,000 in prizes available to be won. After you've finished watching my video, please leave a comment for your chance to win, then click on the link in the description below for the next person in the hop. The more you comment, the higher your chances of winning. All of the giveaway details are on Emily's blog post, and I've linked that below as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. I think it's great to have a favorite go-to style where you feel confident and comfortable, but it's also fun to try something new and completely different.
I'd love to know what your card making personality is. Please let me know in the comments below. I've got a couple of other videos linked here with some out of the box techniques that I think you'll find useful. I hope you'll check them out. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.